What's up, Bass Junkies? The tutorial we are going to rock on today is going to be all about sending your Ableton Live set to another person so that you can collaborate on it. I work with students from around the world, a lot of them on Skype, and when they're sending me their projects, it's really, really important that you get all the sounds collected and stuff like that so that I can open the project on the other end. So if you're ever collabing with anybody, there's a couple features we're gonna run through in Ableton that'll help you to send your set successfully to somebody else and make it really easy. By the way, if you can hear horns and clapping and cheering in the background, um, that's because I'm in Vancouver and the Canucks just won. I'm not a hockey fan, by the way. I think that sitting on your ass in front of a TV and drinking beer is an incredible fucking waste of valuable studio time. Disagree with me, if you will, but I get shit done in the studio while other people are sitting on their asses and watching TV, and I encourage you to do the same thing, too. So let's get down to it. Basically, we've got a completed set here. This is a track I made a little while ago, and I want to take it over to my main studio Mac Pro. I composed this on my laptop on the road, and I want to take it down to the big bad Mac in my studio so I can dial in the mix down. I want to make sure that I'm getting everything collected and saved here. So the first thing you're going to want to do is make sure that anything that you're using that has non-Ableton effects or instruments on it is frozen. This is because the plugins and devices that you use are not going to be mirrored exactly on everybody's system. Everybody uses different tools. And you want to make sure that if you're sending your set to somebody else and maybe they don't have the same plugins, that they can still open it. We do this by freezing tracks. So this one right here has a synthesizer on it called Unique, which is made by Sugarbytes. It's a badass little synth, and I use it in a lot of my stuff. And this is a non-Ableton plugin. So I am simply going to right-click on this track and select Freeze Track. What this is doing is creating a audio bounce down of this track. It's basically frozen the track, created an audio render, so that if anybody else opens this track, even if they don't have this unique synth, they can still play the audio stream. Now, this is useful even for some Ableton plugins because, for example, I use Ableton Live Suite and that has some enhanced devices that the basic version of Ableton does not have, such as sampler, uh, tension, collision, analog, stuff like that. So if I send one of my sets and I'm using analog and I send it to somebody who has just regular Ableton that does not have analog, they won't be able to play my track. So I would freeze that too. Now, if I'm a user on the other end and I open this bad boy up and I'm like, okay, I want to actually do some editing with this, and they don't have the synth, then they can flatten the track. If they do have the synth, they just unfreeze it, and it's easy. But if they don't have the synth, they right-click on it again, and they go flatten. And what that does is it will create a straight-up audio file that they can then edit. You know, So if I wanted to like cut and paste this, duplicate stuff, I could do that, and it would be no problem. All right, so that's how to freeze tracks and uh, do all that stuff. Next, so let's say you have all your tracks frozen, everything's ready to go, is you need to make sure that all of the samples that you're using in this track go along with it in the set folder. And we do that up in this menu right here. We go to the file menu and we bounce down to collect all and save. So we select that, then we get this little context menu. And it's asking us what files we want to save. It's going to copy all of the things from your sample library and stuff like that. You say, you know, I'm using a drum rack in here. I've got kicks, I've got claps, I've got snares. It's going to copy all of those into the samples folder of this set so that anybody who has it can open it. I just need to tell Ableton which ones to collect and save. So you can see here, these are usually the settings that I use. Yes, files from library. No factory files from library. Anybody who has Ableton should have the factory files from library. Files from other projects, yes. Files from elsewhere. So I use yes, no, yes, yes, and then okay. Now what you're going to see is live is starting to copy all of those files into the directory. So now we're done. Okay, We've collected it all and saved. We've free frozen all the tracks, and we're good to go here. So now what I'm going to show you how to do is how to send this set to somebody else using a service called Dropbox, which is a kick-ass way to send files back and forth and collaborate on things. So, very first thing I need to do is locate where this set is. So I'm just gonna pop up in a finder window here. And on the Mac, this set's called uh, Vampire Sunrise. So I'm just gonna search quickly for Vampire Sunrise. File name. So 
So there we go. I've got the project located. And you can see here, there's this folder. It's got the little Ableton logo on it. If we double click inside here, you can see these are all my ALS files. And then we've got a folder called samples. Inside the samples folder is where all the stuff we just copied in got saved. So we've got imported, boom, boom, boom. Those are all the percussion samples, bass and stuff like that. And we've got processed, anything I've bounced down. You can see here's the freeze files. This is where these are located, right? So anything I've frozen is all in there and then crop and reverse. So just so you guys know where these are stored, this is very important that the samples folder goes with it. So some people get it wrong and they just send me like this. They send me the ALS file. And the problem with the ALS file is look at it. It's 537 kilobytes, which means there's no freaking samples with that thing. That's a light file, right? So if you just send me this, it's impossible for anybody else to open that because the samples aren't with it. So you need to go up a directory. You need to take this whole thing right here the whole folder and send that to the person. So what I'm going to do first is uh, I'm going to compress this. So on the Mac, it's super easy. I just right click, I go compress, and it's going to make a zip folder version of my project file. And when I'm ready to send it via Dropbox, I can just send my uh, collaboration partner, the zip file. So while this is compressing, let me just uh, bounce over and I'm going to show you guys Dropbox. This is Dropbox right here. And what Dropbox is, is a file sharing service that is free. Uh, they give you two gigabytes for free and then you can buy more storage. And it's a way for you to collaborate with other artists or send them projects. So what I've got, uh, I'm going to show you two ways to do this. One of them is if you just straight up want to send somebody a file and make it really easy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go here, I'm going to go open Dropbox folder. And what this does is it gives me a, a directory of folders here and I've got one in here called public. So we want to go into public and I'm going to take this and I'm going to drag the zip file in there. Okay. So what it does now is it gives you a little sync icon. This is syncing with an online cloud. So Dropbox is a kick-ass service because it all syncs with the cloud. You can use it from your iPhone too, by the way. It's pretty integrated with, uh, with Mac and with PC. So now I want to send this to somebody. All I do to send this to someone is I right click on it and I go to Dropbox, copy public link. Now the public link is on my clipboard and I'm ready to send it to somebody else. So I can go open um, Mac mail here and I'm going to email it to somebody. You know, I just go here and go to a new message I can send it to uh, some dude that I'm working with. Whoa, I actually have somebody's email address in here that starts with dude. That's fucking awesome. I'm going to send him this just to just to have some fun. Um, Ableton project for dude. Boom. We copy the link in and we are ready to go. Then we just hit send and they can just click on that on their end. And uh, Mr. Dude can uh, open up my Vampire Sunrise said he's probably going to be really confused, but whatever, fuck it. The other way to work with Dropbox is if you actually want to be collaborating with somebody at like the same time, like bouncing stuff back and forth and, and you're both actively working on a tune. Um, there's a different way to do, do that with Dropbox. So let's go up a directory. You can create stuff in here. You can create a shared folder with somebody else and invite them to it. So here I've got one called uh, DJ Vespers. Go figure. And uh, I'm going to take this and I am going to, instead of uh, dragging it in, I don't want to move it. I'm just going to copy and paste it in. So I'm pasting this in. And what this will do is sync with the cloud in the same way, except the other person, instead of just clicking a link and downloading it, will now be able to open it on their system. So basically, the person I'm sharing this folder with will be able to double click on the project open it up, all the files and everything will be in the cloud. They can access it directly from their computer. They can open the project up, make some changes, make some edits to it, um, close it, and then literally within seconds, as soon as it syncs, I could open it 
for on my system and start jamming out and making some changes too. So just imagine you're collaborating with somebody around the world, right? Other side of the globe. And they're jamming out and working during the day in their time zone. And then you're working on the project at, during the day in your time zone, but it's night for them. And you can both simultaneously like be bouncing back and back and forth and working on this project. You can't have it open on two systems at the same time because that would just be fucked up. But if you guys are collaborating back and forth, it's basically a common online cloud where you can store your project and keeps everything in sync. And it's, uh, for what I've seen, the most badass way to collaborate on a track. So back over to Ableton. That is how to freeze tracks and ensure that anybody can open your projects, even if they don't have your plugins. We've covered how to collect all and save to collect all your samples. And we've covered two ways to share projects with people via Dropbox. Boom, pow, that is uh, your tutorial prior to the weekend. Hope you guys have a, a rad weekend and uh, enjoy sharing and collabing with your projects with everybody else around the world. If you uh, dig this tutorial, please come back to my website and blog, which is www.vespers.ca. I post uh, typically at least a video per week. And I have a lot of great content up there that you may not find on YouTube, uh, Ableton set templates, uh, an ebook, and a few things like that. Some goodies if you guys jump on my mailing list. And if you're on that newsletter, you will also be the first to know whenever I publish new tutorials or giveaway tunes for free, which I do frequently. So uh, have a great uh, day, evening, morning, weekend, whatever it is for you, and um, make some kick-ass music. Talk to you soon.